Hi, I'm Josh Felker with Lone Star Handgun. Today I want to talk to you briefly about constitutional carry and the new law that goes into effect in 1 September, what it means to you as a licensee as well as a non-license holder. First off, let me start by saying we are huge advocates of the right to keep and bear arms, that that right shall not be infringed. That being said, we are big fans of this new law. Um, there's still advantages to having your license to carry, but your ability to carry a firearm um, should not be licensed per se by the state. So I just want to start off and saying we're huge advocates of the Second Amendment and we're big fans of this law. Um, so this law does not go into effect until 1 September 2021. So keep that in mind. In order to lawfully carry outside your own property and outside your vehicle right now, that handgun, uh, until 1 September, you still must be licensed by the state of Texas or a state that is recognized by the state of Texas. So keep that in mind. Keep yourself out of some uh, problems until then. So starting 1 September, here's who can carry under constitutional carry. First off, you have to be 21 years of age in the state of Texas. Um, I'll talk about military exceptions and such shortly, but you have to be 21. Uh, it has to be a handgun. It cannot be uh, anything other than a handgun. The Texas Penal Code as well as the Constitution, Texas Constitution does allow you to carry long guns, but we're specifically talking about the uh, handgun and how it affects you under constitutional carry. Uh, cannot be prohibited from owning a firearm under Texas law as well as federal law. Must not have been convicted of assault, carrying a deadly weapon, uh, deadly conduct, um, terrorist threats, disorderly conduct, whether discharging a firearm or unlawfully displaying a firearm within the past five years. Mud does not have been prohibited from possessing a firearm or ammunition under federal law, as well as not in commission of a crime greater than a Class C traffic violation, as well as not intoxicated. Let me briefly talk about intoxication, because that is brought up numerous times in this uh, constitutional carry and how it affects uh, in September. So, um, definition of intoxication in the state of Texas is having a blood alcohol content of 0.08 or greater, or if you have a CDL, I believe it's like 0.02, or if you fail a field sobriety test. That can be from prescription, non-prescription drugs, as well as alcohol. Um, folks, the law allows you to carry firearms on your own property and be drunk crazy if you wanted to. Not recommended, but you can. It's out in public where uh, not carrying and being dis uh, the intoxicated is applicable. Um, you, under federal law, you can't be a felon. Uh, you can have your firearms rights reinstated at some point. Usually, uh, it's after 10 years, firearms rights can be reinstated, but cannot have a felony. Um, not a fugitive from the law. You're not addicted to an a, a illegal drug of sorts. Uh, not considered mentally defective. Uh, you're not an illegal alien or here unlawfully. Uh, you haven't been dishonorably discharged from the service. Now, if you have a... Um, other than honorable discharge from the service, you're still allowed to lawfully own firearms under federal law. But if you have a dishonorable discharge, that makes you ineligible to own, possess firearms. Um, you cannot renounce your citizenship either. Uh, you have to be a U.S. citizen. Um, let me back that up. You don't have to be a U.S. citizen. You cannot have just renounced your citizenship, though, um, as long as you're lawfully here legally under a resident green card or such. Uh, under Not under a certain protective restraining order. So you're not the one that restraining order is being used against. So um, if you have a restraining order against somebody else, that might allow you to own possess firearms. But if you're the one with the protective restraining order, uh, generally you're not allowed to own firearms. And you're not an abuser of domestic violence. So um, if you were convicted on a domestic violence charge as an adult, generally you're prohibited from possessing and owning firearms. Uh, here's some places where it's restricted uh, to carry, whether you have a license to carry or non-license to carry generally. So school, school grounds, uh, transportation vehicles, unless given written authorization, you can't take it into the school. Um, usually as an LTC holder, you can leave it in your car. I'll talk about campus carry here shortly. Um, cannot carry into a polling place. So where the campaign signs have to stop advertising candidates, that's where you have to stop carrying your handgun. Uh, courts and offices thereof. Racetrack and amusement parks secured air of an airport. So once the metal detectors, once you get in line for the metal detectors, that is where you are prohibited from carrying other under, either under constitutional carry as well as a license to carry. Although there is a defensive prosecution, if you have a license to carry and you accidentally carry while in that metal detector line and you're caught, as long as you generally leave that immediately afterwards after being notified, uh, those charges won't be held against you. Um, bars and nightclubs, 51% locations, basically uh, places that uh, sell alcohol for over 51% income for on-premises consumption. You're basically your watering holes. Uh, correctional facilities on days of execution uh, within a thousand feet of hospitals, nursing homes, civil commitment uh, facilities, 
and as well as a room or rooms used for governmental meetings for non-LTC holders. I'll talk about LTC holders here at the end. Um, concealed versus open carry. So uh, this law allows you to carry concealed or openly. Concealed basically means it's out of sight, you can't see it or parts of it. Um, if it's open, basically you can see part of the handgun. It has to be in a holster. Now one of the law changes uh, for the license to carry is the holster requirements for open carry. It, use, it is currently until 1 September has to be on a belt or a shoulder holster. Come 1 September, as long as it's in some sort of holster, the state of Texas is good with you carrying that handgun. Uh, so if you want to walk around in some dockers and a, a t-shirt and wear an ankle holster while openly carrying a handgun, you can do so. It might be a fashion faux pas, but you can do so. Uh, 3006 signs still applicable to licensees as well as non-licensees. Means no concealed carry. 3007 sign means no open carry, both to licensees and non-licensees. Keep in mind, if you violate, bypass, ignore those signs, um, with a few exceptions, it's only a Class C $200 municipal fine. 3006 and 3007 sign means licensees as well as non-licensees are not allowed to carry into that establishment, whether it be concealed or non-concealed. Um, 3005, that's a new one that comes out. So basically 3005, it allows um, businesses and private property owners to restrict non-licensees, so constitutional carry holders, from carrying in their establishment with any form of no gun sign. The only signs that apply to licensees are generally the 3006, 3007 sign, as well as the 51% sign. So this plot sign will apply to anyone that does not have a license to carry into an establishment. 51% sign, 51% or more income is derived from sale of alcoholic beverages for your on-premises consumption. Basic, the way to look at it is this, if you're, they don't allow anyone under 18 in that establishment, then you are probably in a 51% establishment. Now, one of the things that the law did uh, change is if licensees do not receive notification under a 51% sign, they basically can't have charges held against them. While non-licensees, constitutional carry holders can have that, uh, charges held against them. So especially during the pandemic, there was a lot of businesses that transitioned from a 51% establishment to a food establishment so that they could maintain and stay open. So um, it gets rid of some of that confusion that if it's a 51% establishment, it really has to be uh, uh, marked that way. Uh, TABC blue sign. This sign goes away comes from 1 September. This is signs where places that sell or serve alcohol. This is your HEBs, Walmarts, restaurants. Basically, this sign goes away one September, so you'll be able to carry in those places uh, with or without a license unless received notification that you're not allowed to under 306, 307, or a 51% sign as well as the 305 signs or any variations of the 305. Uh, police encounters. Folks, let me just put this out there. Law enforcement generally like it when uh, law-abiding citizens notify them that they're carrying the gun. Generally, most peace officers are pro-gun. Um, so what we recommend is that whenever you have an interaction with an officer and they ask to see identification, um, it's generally a good, good idea to let them know that you are carrying, whether it be under constitutional carry or your license to carry. If you have a license to carry, you're in fact required to notify that officer. Um, the peace officers have the right to disarm you. This has not been put in front of the um, uh, courts yet challenge in court, especially with constitutional carry, but most officers just want to know they're dealing with a law abiding citizen, somebody's not breaking the law. So um, we recommend you notify them. And if they decide to disarm you for whatever reason, um, move slowly, make sure there's clear lines of communication, no misunderstandings. That firearm generally is returned back to you at the end of that traffic stop, unless there is a reason to arrest or dis de detain you. License to carry advantages. Reciprocity with other states, folks. Not all states um, uh, have constitutional carry. And those states that do not have constitutional carry, with a license to carry, you'll be able to carry into over 30 states that do recognize your Texas license to carry. So it's an advantage to that. Um, we know there's no good reason to leave Texas, except in the heat of June, July, and August. But there's advantages to having that reciprocity and visiting other states. Uh, federal gun-free zone. So technically under federal law, you're not allowed to carry within 1,000 feet of a gun-free school zone. Um, but Texas law allows you to legally transport firearms as long as you're lawfully transporting it. So under the um, uh, Motor, uh, Motors Protection Act, you're allowed to carry a gun in your car without a license over 18, not committing any crime other than a traffic violation type thing. So um, with 
without the license to carry, you're definitely getting into gray areas if you drop your kids off with a gun in the parking lot while dropping off. If you have a license to carry, you're 100% good to go, no problems at all. You get to bypass the NICS background check when purchasing a firearm. Folks, if you purchase a firearm, uh, you realize you have to do a 4473 from a gun dealer. That 4473, we do a NICS background check. Now, that usually is instant, happens no time at all except when there's massive runs on guns. Like the early days of the pandemic, there was uh, people that were waiting mandatory 10 to 30 plus days for to purchase that firearm, to get that firearm, um, just because the system was overwhelmed. The license to carry holders were able to carry the gun out that day, so that's kind of a big deal. Uh, if you're under 21 and you're in the service or a veteran, with that license to carry, you'll be able to have that gun and carry it concealed or openly under the license to carry law. If you're under 21 and in the service and without a license, you can't carry under constitutional carry. So there's a, some advantages there. Uh, school district employee in a school parking lot. Currently, uh, the law changed a couple years ago where it allows school employees to keep a gun in their car as long as they have a license to carry in the employee parking lot. Well, under constitutional carry, you're getting into a gray area where you not may be in legal uh, gray area. So having that license kind of it bypasses that. Um, can't carry in open meetings of governmental entities. So um, when it says open meetings, basically it's not a restricted meeting. It's of open to the public. So currently under Texas law, as a license to carry holder, you cannot carry into governmental meetings if they have a 3006 or 3007 sign at both the city, county, and state governmental level. One September, you will be able to with a license to carry. License car Non-licensed to carry holders will still be restricted, not able to, but LTC holders will be able to. Uh, campus carry on at state-sponsored colleges or universities. So um, this is kind of a big deal. So if you're a college student, you're going to a state-sponsored college or university, you can carry concealed under that license to carry into the classroom. There's parts of the campus where they can restrict it, but they cannot restrict uh, LTC holders from carrying into the classroom. Non-LTC holders will be uh, not allowed to. Um, as well as more education on the Texas Penal Code. Folks, I know the uh, none of the stuff that's talked about in the license to carry classes is something you couldn't find out on Google, but there is something to be said about having an instructor and that one-on-one -on -one instruction or just that interaction with an instructor on the use of force, deadly force, when you can pull the trigger and hopefully not go to jail, as well as where you can and cannot carry that firearm. Um, and one of the biggest advantages that's not talked about a lot is interaction with law enforcement officers. Folks, most officers, when they realize that you have a license to carry, they relax a little bit because that means you haven't had a class A or B misdemeanor in the past five years. You cannot have a uh, two of them for drugs or alcohol within a 10 year time frame. So generally you're a card carrying good guy or good gal. It may not help you out of every speeding ticket, but it definitely helps. And I can personally attest to that. So there's advantages to having your license to carry. Um, and either way, whether you have your license or uh, you carry under constitutional carry, we are huge advocates of the good guys carrying a gun. Because as long as there's more good guys carrying guns, the, generally the bad guys, they have less opportunity to do true evil. So if you're ever interested or have questions, feel free to give us a call or take one of our LTC classes. Go to LoneStarHandgun.com for more information.